Okay, welcome to today's show with Phil. We're going to be talking about a um, topic that is very touchy to discuss. Women will do fraction of the sentence as if a man was convicted in the same category of the criminal activity. All right. Woman convicted in 2000 murder of her husband speaks from prison. Matt Lombardi did an article, a credit given to him, March 25, 2022, six minute read. Former Texas veterinarian, a mother of two, Wendy May, May Davidson, is, cur is currently serving 25 years for murdering her husband in 2005. She says she's ready to tell her side of the story. I did not kill him. Well, then, if she did not kill him, then why did she admit it to the investigators? She's told 2020 on 2021 her first network interview from prison. I want my side of the story of what happened. I want people to know what I did and did not happen. Well, she allegedly confessed to this. Okay. If she didn't confess, why is she in prison? Come on, it takes two and two to equal four. In 2006, Davis pled no contest to first court degree murder. What did I tell you? She admitted to this. And two counts of tampering with evidence. She was sentenced to 25 years of prison. She admitted it. She pled no contest. She had overwhelming evidence against her. I did what I did, and I think it was horrible. And I think I made a bad choice. If we're, And there were better choices to be made. But I still did not kill him. What does that sound like? Well, then who did? Davidson said what I did was horrible. There was no excuse. I might, I mean, I might have had crazy reasons in my head. There's no excuse. Well, she admitted it to it. In 2005, she reported her husband, Air Force Staff Sergeant Michael Severance, missing two months later. He's found in a pond in a remote ranch about 20 miles south of San Angelo, Texas, where the couple were living at the time. Okay, uh, Severance Toxicology reported that he's been poisoned with animal tranquilizer and stabbed 41 times posthumously. Again, if you don't want to do the crime, then don't do the time. How much clearer do I need to get? Davidson initially told police the last time she saw her husband, Dave, before he went missing. He was concerned. He didn't want to be deployed. He was afraid that something bad was going to happen. He kept saying, like, those guys over there in Canada would be easy to go to Canada. Am I the only one that this story ain't making no sense to over here? <sighs> At the time of its disappearance, Severance has already deployed five times in the Middle East and preparing for his sixth tour. Couple have given birth to their first child. Davidson had a son from a previous relationship. Again, she was a single mom. Wow. David claimed the pressure of the family and his work was getting on him, including driving three hours round trip to Dice's Air Force Base in Abilene, Texas. <coughs> I was busy. I was in the middle of trying to run this clinic. I just opened. I just had to open. I was just taking care of my two babies. Only thing I noticed is the change was he was having a very hard time 
driving back and forth to Ambling every day. I didn't know that every afternoon he was drinking, and I know that he was using caffeine pills. Dave so told 2020 at the time, I didn't realize there was an issue. But looking back, you know, it was a hindsight. 2020, everything looked back, there was a problem that was not normal. Oh, wow. Despite what David said, there was no evidence. There was never any evidence suggesting that her husband had a problem with drugs and alcohol. Here's where it gets interesting, y'all. All right. The San Angelo in the police department and Texas Ranger Air Force Office of a Special Investigation began investigating Severin's disappearance. However, at the time, he went missing. He was on leave and an official OSI inquiry could not begin until after he was expected back on base. With Severance didn't show up for work, he became AWOL and uh, the OSI was able to take the lead in a deserter investigation. Not only San Angelo Police Department got involved, the Rangers got involved, and the military got involved. All right. The break came in the case about February 2005. Since OSI is an arm of the military, they operate in a different constraint than the local police. They were able to get permission and approval to place a tracking device in Davidson's car. Oh. And the reason was that David was claiming Severance may have been a deserter. There would be a possibility she was helping him hide out. Uh oh. During the surveillance, they saw that she'd been visiting, visiting a remote ranch called Four Sevens Ranch about 20 miles south of it, and San Angelo. Here's where it gets interesting already. OSI and the San Angelo police also searched the family home and Davis, Davidson Veterinary Clinic. They seized her computer hard drive and sent it to the lab for analysis. Uh oh. A few weeks later, the results from the hard drive revealed the suspicious searches on the computer include the including decomposition of the body in water. When the police confronted Davidson with the information, she said she researched it because at the time volunteers were searched were searching for severance. Following the police interview, Davidson called her brother Marshall Davidson, who was a game warden at the time, told him she found Severance dead and living in a room, and she dumped his body in a pond on the Four Sevens Ranch ward. She hadn't killed him. All right. So if she did not kill him, then who did? Who knew about the body? Who knew where the body was at? Well, seemed like we found the answer to the question, didn't we? And the brother goes, hey, he said, Wendy, I'm a cop. You can't be telling me this. My parents drove up here, and me and my brother are telling them everything that happened, which was that I found him dead and dumped his body in the pond. And here, here's where it gets interesting. Davidson said, Davidson said that her brother said he called an attorney instead. He called investigators and told him what Davidson told him. 
Davis said that she moved Severed's body to a pond, stabbed the body, weighed down with cinder blocks. Ugh. Basically, she admitted it to the crime. So I had to take these weights. I tried to tie them to his body, of course. It's the middle of the night, you know. You know, can't hardly see. Davidson said, who stabbed the body because she was afraid it would float to the surface. New air, a new air made bodies float. So I decided to make a hole in the body vent hole so air could escape. Ooh, my gosh. After Severance's body was discovered, Davidson was arrested and taken in custody and charged with first-degree murder and two counts of tampering with evidence. After David was released from jail on bond, toxicology report revealed that Severance was been poisoned by animal tranquilizers that Davidson would have access to in our clinic. Did you know that her, okay, she did all these. She was charged. She was charged for the crime. Okay. After she was charged, her defense team went quickly filed a motion to suppress evidence gained from tracking device and car claim it was, Ill it was illegally obtained since by law officers to get a court order and allowing them to attach a tracker uh, to a person's vehicle. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting. The prosecutors argued since the officer brought Severance was AOL at the time, OSI gained the necessary permission and approval to utilize tracking devices. And here's where it gets interesting. The judge ruled in favor of the prosecution saying the tracker was legal. And... The evidence gained by the tracker was admissible. If found guilty in a trial, Davidson can face 99 years in prison, and after ruling on the tracker, Davidson took a plea deal and pleaded no contest for to her husband's murder, and she sentenced to 25 years. In prison in 2006. Alright, here's where the plot twist takes a twist. Davidson says she still, she doesn't think she is a victim. I think my husband was, husband was a victim. I think my ch children were victims, she said. I think my families are victims. In 2019, uh oh. She was denied parole and is scheduled to be released from Gatesville Correction Institute. Okay, she's scheduled to be released from Gatesville Correctional Facility in 2031. And she said she has not seen her kids since they were two and five. Um, I don't know what the motive behind this is. It's not for me to speculate. But I think, according to the article, punishment fits the crime. Okay. She took a life of a man that was serving in the forces. She admitted it 
to the crime that she had committed. Again, there's consequences made after bad choices or good choices with good consequences. And I cannot emphasize enough, people need to understand, you know, if you cannot do the crime, I mean, do the time, then don't do the crime. It's that easy. 